Alrighty, and we're live. Welcome back to another episode of the 904 Fishing Podcast. I am your host, Alex. I am joined by my co-host, Nick. What's going on, everybody? How's it going? Today, we're going to be talking about winter bass fishing. As everyone knows, you know, we're, we're getting more and more into the... Well, I, I say more and more into the winter months. Most of the country has been in the winter months for quite some time now. However, uh, Florida is just now getting into the 50s and 40s. So we're just now starting to feel that, uh, you know, the effects and whatnot that'll continue on for the next couple months. So our bass fishing has definitely changed and the techniques and what you need to do and all that. Yep, I can incur. Um, yeah, I mean, I went out Thanksgiving Day to try to do some fishing and we, we did not have any luck. Um, I was definitely still using warm water techniques, you know, warm weather techniques, and it just wasn't what we we were not successful with bass fishing pan fishing i mean it would just it wasn't a good time and uh, so that kind of prompted me like all right well time to switch over and you know today we're going to be talking about uh what that means as far as gear you need to do different gear you need to have different techniques different baits because that all changes when it comes into the you know cold weather times the, the more winter uh season um Nick, have you have you had a lot of experience, you know, changing up your baits when it gets a little colder? Yeah, it you know happens every year, and then um, it gets a little goofy sometimes because you know we'll get these little cold fronts that come through for a week or a few days, and then it warms back up, but the water's still cooler than you know what it is in the summer. So pretty much just kind of play it by ear, almost you know try a couple things, a little trial and error. It's really the best way to go about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, part of today's episode is we're going to try to help you guys narrow some of that down uh, so you're not just throwing darts at a wall and hoping something sticks. You know, hopefully we can help you narrow down those darts and, you know, pick out what you need to do. Um, Yeah, we'll try to give you about three darts to throw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. Um, But, uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. The first talking point we have is going to be understanding the bass behavior. So when it comes to... The, uh, the winter months, the colder months here, especially in Florida, the bass behavior definitely changes. And, you know, they do not act the same year round. It's, you know, we're post-spawn now, so they're going to be hungry, but they're not going to be as active, which is a little contradictory. But we're going to kind of go over all that um, and, you know explain what that means and what you need to look for and what you need to keep an eye out for and different things um i'm, I'm gonna say right off the cuff uh top water in the morning I, i've had pretty good experience with that for bass fishing even in cold months nick what do, you, what do you think yeah that's what i was just um going off a of reference looking at an old picture i see it was in february 2018 i caught this 4.4 pound bass um and from my caption, it looks like it was on top water. And I think I cast it right on top of him. He was sitting on a point and um, like somewhere around some some weed lines. And it was pretty much, you know, right on top of him. And, I mean, he slammed it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things and, that yeah. you're, you're going to have with um, the top water, especially in the morning, is – uh, the bass are just going to kind of be waking up. You know, that sun's going to wake them up a little more. They're going to be a little more active first thing in the morning. So they're going to be looking for mm-hmm. something to eat. That top water will definitely get a reaction bite, which I, I would say a good chunk of my uh, bass in the winter time are going to be reaction bites. Yeah, I, I agree too, because that's seems like whenever I have definitely fished in the cold, it's, you know, I just cast it like right on top of them. I'll just be kind of working the different areas of the pond, like whatever it is. And then kind of just end up stumbling right upon on top of one of them, whether it's top water or if you got some kind of trick worm or a fluke or something. Yep. Pretty much. I think that's, yeah, I haven't been in so long, dude. I want to go again. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Like I said, that uh, Thanksgiving was the last time I think I went um, purposefully bass fishing. So, you know, it, it was one of those things. I was a little out of my element. I was a little unprepared. Um, but overall, not too bad. Um, it definitely reminded me that, you know, it's it's not the same. 
it's it's definitely not the same yeah. year round. It's 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 one of those things that for a good chunk of the year you can just kind of throw whatever. But you know these, these winter months, I I was not as prepared as I should have been. For, yeah, I think for another time. Yeah, another thing. Another time too, we went. Remember that one pond that was um, down Argyle. It was near like a tennis court and soccer field, and we put in, and it was a really nice like freshwater pond that was pretty good size and I th- oh you know it was that day that we got rained on we we're having yep. to bail water out of the yep. kayaks i remember that yep i was just yeah, trying to say so, that <laughs> so that pond over there i've also gone in in the winter thinking you know i could just use normal what i would i would use like a you know nor- like a weedless hook with a the bullet weight i think probably like a quarter ounce and either a fluke um trick worm i usually had the best luck with culprit or the zoom flukes but and to, to my surprise i mean yeah just nothing was hitting that and i think i switched over to like a little crank bait or a rattle trap and that's what i eventually yeah. was able to get something with i think just it got their attention a little bit more and yeah that reaction I don't know. for sure yeah and that's that's one of the things that i throw uh, a lot in the winter time is crankbaits, which you know, a, a lot of people don't like to throw hard baits in the winter time. But I know, uh, especially up north, jerk baits are very popular up north when the, you know mm-hmm. when when the colder months hit, and that's kind of what you know because I would go up north and visit my family, and everyone's throwing jerk baits and rattle traps and square bills and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, why doesn't anybody do that down south? And I started doing that down home, you know, d- uh, back home. Uh, when it was colder and I you know my catch rate went through the roof because when before and I feel like this is a strong misconception for a lot of people is they think that oh it gets colder I have to use soft plastics and that's that's not true you don't have to use exclusively soft plastics in the winter time it it is better you know if you're trying to go for a finesse bite but I have a lot of luck in the winter times on jerk baits square bills and rattle traps yeah and it makes sense too because if you got one of those those rattle traps and I mean, you're, you're pretty much just fish in different water levels. And if it's a suspending or what, what is it whenever, you know, like it swims deeper and then it can float back up and you can work those different water levels. Yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Probably bill nose or whatever you're talking about, but yeah, jer- jerk baits are typically what you're describing. You know, they'll, they'll kind of dive down, you know, you, you twitch them around a little bit, give them a couple jerks, mm-hmm. you know, hence jerk baits. They're the long, uh, hard plastic baits with the bills on the front and okay, uh, yeah, yeah very popular for trout up north and i have a lot of luck with them down here with uh bass during the months and you know i you know throw that out you can either do a you know just a straight retrieve and then pause it every now and again because i typically find mm-hmm. on the pause that's you know because a lot of a lot of bass in the winter time with my experience is they'll follow things for a while but they don't. Oh, yeah. They they don't really want to commit because they don't really want to you know expend that Insert energy. Insert all that energy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you know the, a lot of bass will follow. I can't say how many follows I've had in the winter months. And then you know you you give them that slight pause or just a quick jerk or something. Then that that's what will trigger the reaction bite. And you know you you, you end up hooking up. Yeah. D- I, dang, dude. I want to get back out there and do it again because. <laughs> I mean, you know, and the more information that we've learned over the years, even with not like bass fishing super recently, um, it's just more to add to the arsenal. And then you know that you have a better idea and you can go out there and something, you know, try to build five yep. lures or something. Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you guys right now, if you look up, you know, top five baits or lures to use in the winter months i guarantee you rattle trap jerk bait and square bills is going to be in that list i mean 100 percent that's going to be in the list so definitely give that a shot um that's more of the reaction bite of things now when it comes to finesse which is what a lot of people do in the winter months and a lot of people try to do in the winter months is it's more uh i don't want to say difficult but it's it's takes a little more practice and a little more patience because you have to get really good at working that bait. Uh, wacky rigs is one of my yeah. go-tos in the winter months. I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. W- wacky rigs yeah, is dude. one of those months. Yours is one of those baits that in the winter months I have a lot of luck with. Um, you know, you throw it on the edge of a weed line, and you just float it down, 
once it hits bottom, reel it back up to the top, let it float back down. It's going to look like, you know, something that has died and or has fallen in the water and is floating down. And the bass kind of see that and they think, okay, I don't have to really expend a lot of energy to get that. I just kind of walk up and, or, you know, swim up and, and eat it. And so I'm good. So, you know, Wacky Rigs is definitely one of my go-to soft plastics for the wintertime. Yeah, that's what, whenever we had that little bass competition out there near the airport. Yep. Was that River yep. City? Yeah, yeah that's, that's River City. all yep. I was using. That's yeah, all I was, I was just... using, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a Cinco. I think it was like a, it was either a green and white or it was like the black and silver and white um, Cinco worms. And yeah, I I think you had an actual like wacky rig set up, like a proper setup. Like a tool, I was just yeah. using a like a two or three aught um, bass hook, like the weedless hook just hooked sideways through it. Same thing. Yep. And it was working pretty good, honestly, for both of us. We were we were kind of slaying it out there. Yeah, it, no, that was definitely a great day of fishing. Um, if I remember correctly, you won that. Um, I did after you were talking all that smack. I dude. was. I was watching the video. I was like, dang, dude. I was. I was Alex is getting a little cocky man. over here. <laughs> I was. Because for the first, you know, five, ten minutes, I was like, oh, man, this guy's got nothing. And then he switched over, you know, to that to that wacky rig style bait and started catching him too. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I didn't sign up for this. Wait a minute. <laughs> Bro, chill out, chill out. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> But, you know, it's definitely, um, if you don't have a wacky rig tool, you guys can pick them up pretty much anywhere. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, get them at pretty much any sporting goods store. It's just a hollow tube that you can put a Senko style bait into. And then, you know, there's a little rubber O-ring that slides onto the bait off of the tube. And that's what you hook your, um, you, your circle hook to or any, any hook you need, really. Circle hooks are typically the most common used with the wacky rig. But like Nick was saying, I mean, he just had a uh, offset j-hook and he was hooking it right through the middle of the senko and he was using that no you know no problem and he was he was having good luck with that as well one could say i was under or i wasn't prepared or i was just being resourceful i'm gonna go with uh, a little bit of both yeah, a little bit of both exactly a little yeah. bit of both exactly. i didn't feel like now you know you can use both you know honestly probably the wacky rig setup probably it's just gonna be it's gonna perform better but if you don't feel like having to rig all that up you still can just Absolutely. have a weedless hook and just do the same thing i don't remember where we're using any i think we might have been using like a little maybe a quarter ounce or eighth probably an eighth ounce bullet weight on there too and just kind of help it drop a little faster you might have typically when i do wacky rig probably weightless um, i was about to say i just use weightless on a spinning setup um meaning a uh, a spinning reel and I, I just usually throw a weightless as typically how mm-hmm. I fish it. So I'm, I'm going to assume I didn't have a weight on it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I probably tried both, I'm sure. I guess it just depends on, you know, I don't know. I guess it just depends on how you're feeling. You could always try both. And then if nothing's really going or the, um, the action of it, like it's just sinking too fast and you're not getting like the, the, two ends of the worm kind of like floating through the water. Yeah. Almost look like they're moving a little bit with the weight. Exactly. Yep. And probably just take the weight off, have it look a little bit more natural. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward there. That's your finesse and reaction bites. Um, and of course, you know, with the months changing, your gear is going to change, which will take us into our next talking point. You know, what essential gear do you guys need to get ready and get geared up for, bass fishing in the winter months and how to you know appropriately gear yourself so you're not kind of floundering out there like i was um definitely right off the cuff you're gonna want a good coat probably some gloves and a hat you know a beanie you know a a hunter's cap Mm -hmm. something something to keep your head warm um it's not as important down here in florida because we don't really deal with most of what the rest of the country does uh, when it comes to the winter months, but I mean, I, I've got a nice, I hate being cold. So I've got a nice thick winter coat that I wear out there. I've got waterproof gloves that I wear out there. Uh, you know, I got plenty of beanies that I wear out there. So I'm sure you guys have seen them in the videos. You know, I typically, it drops below 50 degrees. I got a beanie on cause I do not want to be cold. <laughs> you mean 60 degrees? Yeah. That's probably a little fair, a little, a little more fair. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a little bit more accurate. Yeah. I just, uh, with some black Friday shopping, I, just actually got a sick, nasty Magellan fishing jacket that 
Um, like a nice tan color. It's got a fair bit amount of pockets, but it's got where you can Velcro the sleeves or the cuff links or oh, the cuffs, nice. whatever yeah, you want to yeah, call yeah. those. And it's got, got like short fleece. Yeah, it's got like short fleece on the inside and the whole thing's like neoprene, but I put it on and it's kind of thick, but that's good because that's going to block wind. Say, yeah, but most it's... importantly, I, I, I stuck my arm under the sink and that thing is fully waterproof. Like it nice. just beads right off nice. and you just give your wherever a wipe and the water just gone and it's not even wet. So I'm really excited for that with yeah. the kayak, especially oh, yeah. being a little bit more oh, yeah. chilly whenever we can get back out there and do that again, because I need to find next probably a pair of pants that are going to do the same thing with the um, water resistance or waterproofing. Because if you guys see in the videos, you know, my legs are soaked <laughs> yeah. and the water coming down the paddles, even if you have those little, rubber Guard, rings on right. there that's supposed to they don't work unless maybe you get some massive ones could be a thing i don't know but yeah definitely you're going to want to stay dry because yeah de definitely stay as dry as you possibly can okay yeah because then that that wind hits and then you're you know if it's if it's no, overcast no. you're not going to dry out nope. and really i mean if you're paddling and you have a normal paddle kayak you're just going to continue to get wet from that but um like Alex said, also gloves, and that's a good thing too with bass fishing. I mean, if you're going to be running artificial, then you don't have to worry about baiting up yeah. dang near every cast. So the gloves are a little bit more, they're a little bit more relaxed on that end as far as you can just throw them on. You don't got to keep worrying about taking them off and anything like that as compared to saltwater fishing where you're having to bait hooks and do all kinds of stuff like that and, and reach in and get your live bait from the bait <laughs> yeah. bucket and that nice icy cold water. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And, it's the little things. It, it, and, it, and that's, that's what I was just about to say is it's the little things that all kind of builds up into a nice overall experience. You know, if your head's warm, you're going to have a better time. If you're dry, you're going to have a better time. If the wind's not cutting into your jacket, you're going to have a better time. If your hands are warm, you're going to have a better time. And all these little things build together and really, really, really help, you know, overall. Because, I mean, if you're if you're enjoying it more as far as you not being miserable out in the water and out or even on the water, in the water, around the water, anything like that, um, it, you know, it's one of those things that it if you can focus more on the fishing – then you'll you'll have a lot better time, right? Yeah, and buffs are crucial for that, just to block the wind, that nice cold Absolutely. wind from get on your face and get wind burn. Um, or you know, you just have a frozen face. But also, crucial thing in the winter, and especially when the temps start dropping, and you have that where it's cold for at least a week or two weeks, and is hanging around. You got to keep that chapstick on you for the lips, because there's nothing worse than you're out there. You're out there fishing, the wind's whipping, and you've got chap lips. And they're just, if you already have a buff on too and they're rubbing on the buff, you know, it's just uncomfortable. So, yeah, that's always something good yeah. to have in there too. Definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, luckily that that's more of like your gear. And then when it comes to fishing, we, we already kind of talked about some stuff as far as getting, you know, uh, soft plastics rigs like stuff you you don't really have to change like your reel sizes your line stuff like that like i don't change oh, yeah. my reels or line in the winter time um i you know I, I might put on a leader sometimes if i'm trying to go a little more finesse but overall i really don't change my line my my um reel or my rod when it comes yeah, to need to yeah yeah exactly um at least down here i know up north when the where the water is a lot more clear you have an issue with that but down here our, most of our water is like chocolate milk, so you don't really have to worry about that. The forbidden chocolate milk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, yeah, the forbidden chocolate milk. Because most of the bass fishing that we do around here is either going to be around, you know, uh, retention ponds or the St. Johns River or Doctor's Lake, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. our water, our water is just not as clear for that, so we we don't really have to worry about that. I do wish that we had more like freshwater lakes and ponds around here that yeah. were just not on somebody's property yeah yeah exactly maybe, maybe we'll have to get looking because i know that there's i think it's the rodman reservoir or rodman reserve oh the I rodman i think Dam. it's yeah i think it's yeah. near P palatka yeah it's yeah it's for this yep yep i don't know how 
great it is for kayak fishing if it's more of like boat territory but i have seen videos where they've been catching donkey bass like at least 10 pounds and they're using live shiners and a bunch of lily pads everywhere it looks it looks nice i'd like to go explore it at some point yeah I'm there's a little worried a, about gators there's a lot you'll be fine don't worry about it there, i mean there's a lot of stuff yeah. south of us um, I mean, you, you've got Crescent Lake, you've got Lake George, um, you've got Windsor Lake. I know in Stark, you've got like Lake Samson. I've got friends that have fished Lake Samson and stuff. Um, you've got Kingsley Lake, if you can, you know, get on the base there to fish around there. But I, I know a lot of people that go a little more in to Jacks or into Jacksonville, into Florida, meaning like towards the center. And you, you, yeah. you we, we have a lot more lakes and rivers and stuff there. Um, obviously where we live, you know, we, we have the St. John's and Doctor's Lake and basically retention ponds everywhere, you know, we could possibly want to. Um, but, uh, most of what we have is either going to be brackish water or saltwater, which is why we do a lot of intercoastal saltwater fishing. But, um, when we do go bass fishing, it's mostly, I pretty, pretty much want to say it's either Doctor's Lake or like an offshoot of the St. John's, that's mostly freshwater or a retention pond. Like that, that's pretty much going to be it. Yeah, we could we could even try over near me, near like Jointon Creek. Yeah, there's yeah. a few decent spots through there, and I mean, there's further up the St. John's this way. There's there's a lot more lily pads in the water, so yeah, I think the salt content is much less, but I think that there's well, yeah, I mean. Like, J- Julington oh. Creek, I know, is very... No, I was just going to say, I know Julington Creek is is kind of well-known for its bass fishing. Yeah, you know, honestly, where the Clark's Fish Camp is, we could put in right there at some yep, point. exactly. Yeah. work our way down. Um, is there no wake zones through there? there yeah, oh, be, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. Okay. 100%, definitely. Um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, we've... Uh, trying to think of other bat you know winter bass fishing tips uh like nick was saying live bait definitely helps in the winter months um you know not you- like top water or frogs is See, that more summer no I, well that's the, that, okay here's the thing with top water frogs and i got kind of a problem with top water frogs because i Uh-oh. have never personally had success on top water frogs popper Man, frogs regular frogs <laughs> soft plastics hard it doesn't matter what it is. I just, I have never, ever, ever had luck on topwater frogs. I've had plenty of luck on topwater, but topwater yeah. frogs, just for the life of me, I, I can't figure out. I don't know what it is. I just. I think I actually, so it often gets overlooked, but I think I might know what it is. What's that? I think it just might be a skill issue. Oh, see, I wasn't holding my mouth right. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, no. Um, no, it is, it is hard, though. I've only probably caught, like, maybe two bass on a frog whenever I'd be like, Oh dude, this looks like a good spot to throw this frog lure. Heck yeah, dude, I'm gonna hit top water off this lily pad. And then, you know, it just doesn't pan out that way, but there has been a couple times and it, it seems harder than, you know, you got other lures that you can use and probably get better results or same results. But, um, yeah, I don't know. There's what about those uh like those brush hogs? Oh no, what are the other with the spinners? The spinner baits. Oh yeah. It has like the uh, Yeah, buzz baits. Yeah, yeah, buzz baits or beetle spins too. Yeah, oh yeah, beetle spins I have a lot of luck with in the winter time. Um and um not so much spoons. I, I haven't had a lot of luck with spoons in the winter time. I feel like that's more of a spring kind of summer bait. At least in my, you know, experience. They have like freshwater spoons, or are you just talking about like normal, like those castmaster spoons? Not, not the castmaster spoons. Those are huge. Those are for like saltwater. But I'm talking about like, yeah, like the little like you know half inch Where, to a quarter inch spoons, like the real small ones that are just made to imitate like a little minnow or something. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like, probably maybe better for what crappie. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, those are definitely more, you know, used for crappie, but I've I've caught some pretty nice bass on small little spoons like that actually fishing for crappie, and I was able mm-hmm. to get some, you know, nice nice bass just kind of out of the blue. I was like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that, but I'm not going to, you know, say no to it. Yeah, right? I'm going to set this hook. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. 
But, um, yeah, I mean, as far as baits is, is concerned, I mean, finesse, reaction bites, or live bait, you know, can't go wrong with shiners or minnows or stuff like that and throw it on a bobber and just wait. You know, nothing wrong with that. Because um, I guess another thing, too, if you can, if you're running a, like, you know, you're running a weightless setup or, or something and you're not running a weight, a weedless setup, I'm sorry, a weedless that is also weightless. If you can get it to, once you cast it and right as it hits the water, be able to kind of reel in and just like yank the line or the rod back a little bit and get a little top water skip and then let it sink down. That's going to yeah. also, oh, yeah. that'll help it just attract them a little bit more over there and they'll hear it or see it. And I've had good luck with that. Just trying to get that as soon as it hits the water, bring it in, get a little skip action going there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with that. Um, just a little something to get their attention kind of initially. And mm-hmm. then you, you want to kind of work that bait and that's how you're going to work on getting a bite. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And, and that's, dude, well, just like, I really want to go bass fish now. Well, I know every time we talk about whatever kind of fishing or the topic for the week, like, you know, when I was talking, you know, three weeks ago and I was talking about going off the beach for, you know, tuna and trolling for kingfish and stuff like that, I'm thinking like, all right, I, I can do it. What do I need? I need, I, you know, I need a VHF radio. I need, you know, outriggers and stabilizers for my kayak. Mm-hmm. I can do this. It's not hard. And now we're talking about bass fish and I'm thinking like, yeah, I need to order myself some more little spoons for that, you know, get, get myself, you know, a Senko kit. Yeah, right. And, go go bass fishing every time we talk about it you know i get excited to go for you know that kind of fishing and i hope you know everyone listening or watching on youtube or anything you know wherever you're watching or listening or anything you know i i hope it inspires you guys to go out and want to do some fishing as well yeah because i mean you know it also i didn't i haven't gone fishing this whole you know thanksgiving week or anything so i am uh i have pent up fishing energy that i need to do something with (laughs) pent up fishing energy yeah i i feel like uh those who fish um even semi-frequently i don't even want to say frequently semi-frequently those who fish semi-frequently will understand the pent up fishing energy it's just you know you you get itchy watching people go fishing or see pictures and post and you know you watch videos on youtube and you listen to podcasts and you're sitting there like that Mm -hmm. could be me that could be me that could be me (laughs) i know i I tracked down this spot on the gps i found it (laughs) Oh, I, I love. Oh, you know what? I know another good. Um, I know another good freshwater pond, that's What's like that? straight freshwater. It's kind of a little bit of a ways away, but not like stark or not that distance. So it's it's near Princess Place Preserve, that place I keep telling you about. That's a sick place to go. It's, it has great campsites. Uh-huh. Um, but there's this pond that it's a little. I guess it's like a little county pond, but they have little docks on there, and there is uh, feeders out there. Now, they're probably guaranteed, actually, is water moccasins and probably gators. You know, you get that with, you know, ponds here in Florida. But, yeah, right, um, you could put a kayak in there, and it's a nice pond. I don't think I went on it in the kayak, but I know that I've seen bass out there. Cause I've either gone out there in the morning going to a fishing spot or like leaving, or I've seen them in the evening, just absolutely tearing up top water or they're just blowing up on the surface. So I'm glad that I remembered that because it's been, I don't know, that's been years since I've been there, but um, it's always a good thing. Remembering also, you know, ponds that you've been to or any spots that you haven't been to in a while. So, absolutely so you can revisit kind of revamp and you know discover mm. rediscover i should say you know different uh places you can fish in different areas and whatnot that maybe you haven't been to in a while maybe there's some big bass there now yeah we actually just the other was it last week whenever i was out in lake city um with work there was right down the street from my customer there is a pond i forget the name of it but it's a not even a pond it's a big lake out there near osceola kind of right down the street from the Osceola shooting range. But um, it's a big freshwater pond, and they got a boat ramp right there. I've seen people kayaking in there. And um, I know Lake City is a little bit ways of a way, but... Yeah, I mean, it's um, not that far. It's about 45 minutes down I-10. It's not too bad. Is it 45 minutes? I make it a lot. It's about 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I'm going to just drop it today. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I I make that trip 
quite a bit. And from Jacksonville I-10 exit to the 90 exit um, to get to Lake City. And then once you get down, yeah. you know, 90 past all the prisons and whatnot, it's about 45 minutes. as the uh, If you've got good traffic and you're able to go, it's about 45 minutes. Now, if you hit any kind of traffic or anything like that, you're going to be looking at about an hour. But, yeah, it's about 45 minutes. It's not too bad. Nah, it's really. You I know, mean, you got to think about it. We that, that's about the same time as we go to you know Saint Augustine. Exactly. Or so, yeah, exactly. You know Saint Augustine, Hector. It's the same amount of time. It's just a little different. We're going into Florida as opposed to heading to the coast, which again, mm-hmm. typically what we do, just because that's the kind of fishing that one you guys like to see and whatnot. But you know, maybe we explore a little more into uh, Florida and you know try that out. Yeah, I mean, I'm down for it too. And that's also a good adventure too. I mean, I haven't I haven't walked through the woods to find a pond in a long time. And you know, I was thinking about that earlier in the episode. Is I feel like when we were younger, we didn't have you know the fancy kayaks and the portable sonars and the expensive rods and reels. And when we were using you know the twenty dollar Walmart specials and whatever fishing bait that we got for Christmas or our birthdays that year, and we yeah. just what were I, I i mean for me you know when i was younger uh we would just walk we would just walk yep. until we found a park or a pond or anything we would just start fishing yeah you know just, the old <laughs> graffitis. yeah exactly we just take a walk <laughs> figure something out and i know like nick when, when you and i first started fishing together we we did that a lot too we would find somewhere to park and we would just start walking. And I feel like, you know, I haven't done that. We brought our skateboards time. at one time in Fleming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you, we parked somewhere, you know, and just rode our skateboards around until we found places to fish and different, you know, ponds and stuff like that. But I feel like now I'm almost getting too technical with it. I'm getting too involved. I'm making it too difficult. I'm Well, you know, you know that's kind of just what happens whenever you have more tools that make it easier or could make it more proficient you want to i mean also you know if you spend some decent chunk of change on a kayak or a boat you're going to want to use that to get your money's worth but yeah sometimes it's just the simplest way is to actually just you know go back to your roots like you know or, or or try the try the little bit easier way and see if you get the same results we need yeah. to go to governor's creek too I don't know where we could put in, but we, I'm sure we could figure Governor, it out. Governor's Creek? That's, so that's where it comes from, the St. John's and Green Cove, right there over that little bridge right there. Uh-huh. Not the Black Creek Bridge, but it's pretty much right there as you're getting into downtown Green Cove, where that McDonald's is. It's literally right there. Oh, okay. And that Ace Hardware, okay. yeah. Yeah, so I've put in there before. Um, pretty. It looks like a pretty... But the great potential spot. I haven't been there in a while, but I, I cannot remember how we got down into the water. I know there's a bulkhead. I don't think I was like ballsy enough to just, yeah, let me just throw my kayak down here and then have to just hope I stick the landing down this like three, four foot drop from the bulkhead onto the kayak. I'm quite sure I didn't do that, but, um, there might be, Oh dude, I'm actually dumb. There's literally, a marina right there when you put it in and then you go underneath the bridge and then bam you're right there in governor's creek perfect okay yeah that's right I, I was like dude hold on a second now i know that there's an easier way i know i was younger and probably did it the more courageous way but that's fine it's fine <laughs> you, i'm sure you would have stuck it I mean, I either would or wouldn't, so... I was about to say. Well, you pretty know, high chances. We, hey, we can always go back and, you know, give it a shot. Yeah, right? But, My back! Right, right, now that we're a little older. <laughs> oh, God! But, um, as always, um, I, I, you know, we're going to be wrapping up the episode here shortly, but uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, let us know in the comments below. Let, you know, comment anything. You're more than welcome to send me an email. Um, my email is 904fishingflorida at gmail.com if you don't want it to be in a public place. Or if you do, you know, you just want to ask me something, I respond to every email I get. I respond to every comment I get. And I, I try to help everyone as best I can. I'm not one of those guys that's stingy with, our, you know, the spots that I find. Because just because you know where the fish are doesn't mean you know how to catch the fish. 
And, you know, it's an opportunity for me to help you learn how to catch those fish. So I'm always looking forward to that. Now, is there any kind of apps or anything? I know that they have, um, like, catching apps that can kind of give you a little bit more details. Is there anything that you would shout out or recommend to kind of look at for different spots as oh. well? See, so honestly, the best – it's its funny you ask that because the best fishing app, and I've tried all of them. I, I've tried – I can't think of the names off the top of my head right now, but I, I have tried every fishing app for bass fishing that you can possibly think of that has, you know, spot maps and reports and, mm-hmm. you know, di- different – zones that fish i've tried all of them and when it comes to bass fishing genuinely the best bass fishing app that i have discovered is uh google maps Uh, i I, I just go on google maps i put on the satellite view and i'm there you know it's it's that simple i you know it's not it's not hard i just you know okay where am i going where do i want to be where's abouts do i want to you know uh uh fish and then I just find water around where that is, and I'm good. Yeah, and you can always load up a few spots or, or save a few spots in the GPS and just, you know, go in the morning and check them out, see if they're accessible or yep. whatnot. And then the good thing, too, um, I think we I think we covered it, but going back to with it being winter bass fishing, um, the bite times, you know, if it's cold, once the sun's kind of around noon and it's like warmer in the day, they'll probably be a little bit more active too. So if you're going to go drive around, check out a few different spots, then yeah. time frames should be okay. I mean, better than like you got to get there first thing, like first sunrise or, or evening, and you have only that time window. So you'll you'll have shorter days as far as daylight savings, which I hate. Um but you know, you know, you can Agreed. at least have a longer time to fish, per se. Because if you can get these spots midday, because that's there's been a lot of times I try to get there at dusk or you know a couple hours before the sun goes down or as the sun's coming up, and then maybe not have as great as hits. But then, I mean, midday it's just warming up a little bit, and then you'll see a little bit more activity. Exactly. Yeah. Um. It, you know, and it, it's one of those deals fishing of course if, if you guys don't have any luck with it initially don't don't get discouraged don't you know just give up you know the first time you go out bass fishing if you don't catch anything just keep trying you go out the next weekend go out the next day whatever it is you know just 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 keep trying you, you'll, you'll get it eventually. Yeah. You'll, you'll figure out what's wrong what's right you know how you need to do it and you'll 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 figure it out eventually and it makes it that much better too whenever you catch a donkey or, or something decent or even a few small ones. If you you know catch a bunch of small ones, that's still a fun time too because you know that you're catching fish. Exactly. I mean that day, like Nick and I were talking, you know that day that, uh, you know we, we caught a bunch of them up up at River City. We weren't catching huge bass, but we were still catching bass. Yeah, and it was it was like that. I mean it was seconds of of casting out, and you know you'll get that with the right conditions, but you're not you you know you can't always expect to catch them every time. I say that as I do, as I literally expect to catch something every single time. But um, well, I mean, yeah. as time is told, yeah, that's not usually how that works. But it's it not going to stop us. Not going to stop us. Yeah, it can. The more practice you get with it, and more experience you get with it, and also having the ability to kind of adapt and not get stuck on the same style of fishing, and you know, it's just the more experience you get from it, the more you know what to do, and more options you have absolutely well probably more patience too oh definitely yeah if you, yeah because i i know now that you know i've been saltwater fishing a lot more i'm a lot more patient with it than i was initially because oh yeah i mean right off the cuff i was every, every time i went cap or saltwater fishing and i didn't catch something within 10 minutes i'm thinking oh my god what am i doing wrong and it's like all right I gotta change spots yeah i gotta, I gotta change spots it's yeah it's not that serious <laughs> but um all right you guys that'll wrap up today's episode on winter bass fishing like i said if you guys got any comments or anything like that let me know down below uh i respond to every single one i see nick you know responds to a couple of them as well so definitely don't be afraid to ask anything correct but um yeah you got anything to add nick um just that like i'm i'm really 
<laughs> ready to go fishing? Really one, yeah, I'm, I'm really itching at the uh, chomping at the bit, I guess, you know, to As it were. gather and go fishing. It's probably, I'm probably going to be checking out some other spots too, and I'll, I'll send them to you. And then um, if I find any other good ones too, I don't know if you want to post them anywhere too. Just like, hey, you know, here's some free information. Check it out. Check it out for us if you could. <laughs> I, I've thought about that. I'm in the works with a couple things, so you guys keep an eye out. But I, I keep Ooh. an eye out for an announcement. But I, I've got an idea for kind of a spot. Not, not. I don't want to say a spot map, but like a local f- Jacksonville, Florida, St. Augustine. You know, this general area that Nick and I kind of cover, and that I cover with this channel, uh, for definitely more personal and localized reports for fishing so keep an eye out for that i'm still working on it Ooh, that's exciting sounds spicy all righty guys well that'll end today's episode of the 904 fishing podcast uh if you guys haven't make sure to like and subscribe so you guys get notified i go live every monday 7 p.m eastern and i upload a video every week on thursday at 7 p.m eastern but until next time you guys uh keep your lines tight your cast long and your story's true yeah, and y'all have a good one. Everyone have a good week at work and at home. Uh, it's going to get a little bit silly Absolutely. this week, but hey, it's bonfire season. And yeah, everyone just have a good evening. Thanks for listening and watching. Absolutely. Uh, we appreciate Absolutely. it, and we'll catch you in the comments over there.